meet my very good friend, the late Dan Carter. This is the second restoration job I have done for and with Dan Carter. Dan had been in boating for a long time. He had owned the catch Tioga and delivered it to California. Some years later, Dan purchased the Quiet Tune, another L. Francis Hershoff design catch. When Dan had Quiet Tune delivered to Newport Beach, California, everyone on the waterfront said, you need to find Wayne Edel and have him help you restore the Quiet Tune. I paid Dan a visit at his boat hauled out in Lido Shipyard and he didn't really take much notice of me. Dan went back to his friends and said, I met Wayne Edel Jr., but I would really like to talk to his father. They said, no, no, that was Wayne Edel. Dan pulled up to my shop one day, made a formal apology, and an incredible friendship began. Dan was a graduate of West Point. In those days, Dan worked for Santa Fe International. He traveled all over the world, helping to engineer everything from bridge footings to oil export terminals. In the business, they call that fraternity pile butts. Dan was a perfectionist. Money wasn't the issue. The restorations he was doing on these boats had to be top-notch and first class. One of Dan's sayings was, I may not know everything, but I've seen a lot. One of the main reasons I've been able to take my work and my restoration business to such a high level is because that I've worked with people like Dan Carter. Their contribution of knowledge and experiences has nurtured me into a lifestyle available nowhere else in the world. Dan spent several years looking long and hard for a powerboat that was worthy of his restoration efforts. Dan found and was able to acquire a 1929 47-foot tri-cabin motor launch built by the Stevens brothers. Tapawinga had been kept near where she was built in Stockton, California. She had been kept most of the time under covered sheds. She had been well cared for by all of her owners and no one had tried to do any serious alterations. She was almost all original, but with that there were some structural issues we needed to address. Dan had the boat trucked down to Marina Shipyard in Long Beach for the first phase of the restoration. Phase one of this restoration was to replace the frames that were broken in the engine room. That was basically all of them. Also, one of the engine bearers under the water pump was completely rotted through. This was one of the reasons that the boat could not be delivered down on her own bottom. There are two basic ways to replace broken frames. One of the ways is from the outside. Simply remove the planking, replace the frames, and then replank. Athena's planking was Port Orford cedar, fastened with bronze fasteners. Because the boat was kept in fresh water, the fasteners and the planking were in great shape. Because we needed to replace the engine bearers, the engines needed an overhaul, and the wiring needed to be redone, the decision was made to replace the frames from the inside. The engines and the engine bearers were removed. The engine room was then cleaned and the paint removed. The inside stringers were removed. Then we could take patterns and systematically laminate up and replace the frames. On this job, I designed a little tool that hooked into the limber hole and pulled the floor right off of the floor bolt. I then could use the old floor as a pattern. We built the new floors and engine bearers out of Purple Heart, bedding everything with 5200 or epoxy. We still have quite a bit to do before we can get Athena back into the water. Check out part two when we put on a new transom. These videos are made possible by efforts through the Maritime Preservation Trust. Your contributions and support make these videos possible. Please don't forget to subscribe, share with your friends, and become a member of the Maritime Preservation Trust.